Hello and welcome to this episode of Kota Cloud with me, Kevin Evans. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about Azure Hybrid Cloud and my home lab setup. So let's just go through the prerequisites. So I'm using my Intel NUC, trusty Intel NUC. It's an i7 with 64 gigs of RAM, I think, off the top of my head. I've installed as the base host OS, uh, Windows Server 20, 2022 Core Edition. And I've got the Windows Admin Center installed. So if you don't know what the Windows Admin Center is, it's basically an extension, an agent that gets installed um, and provides like a graphical user interface for me to manage that server via a web browser, which I'll be demonstrating shortly. I've also got an Azure tenant and a subscription set up to host my Azure Arc um, objects in Azure as well. I've also connected my um, uh, server Hyper-V host to Azure using the gateway connector beforehand, right? So everything's sort of synced up. And we're going to be basically demoing and onboarding an Azure Arc uh, enabled operating system. So again, I'm going to be, I've already deployed a uh, demo virtual machine using Windows Server 20, 2022. I keep on, keep on messing that up. Right, so let's get on with it. Let me just minimize this. Let's bring up my browser. So let me show you Windows Admin Center. So I've gone to my local Intel NUC. I've installed all the prerequisites like I talked about. Once I've got that installed, I'm able to go to the server, the local server IP address, and I'm I log in with my local admin credentials and I'm presented with this as soon as I log into the Windows Admin Center. If I had a, uh, you know multiple servers, they'd be in here, right, that I've got connected. Um, as you can see here, I've got my local server called Neptune, which is the gateway. The last time it's connected, how it's being managed, which username, so the trusty administrator account, and I've got the Azure Arc status stating that it's connected, right? So let's click on this, let's go in. some errors there, but we'll just refresh that. So as you can see, a very familiar um, scenario um, and view here, it looks like the Azure portal quite a lot, right? So I've got um, basic details about my uh, server. I've got 64 gig of RAM. Um, I've got the operating system that I've got installed, right? Which is uh, server 2022 data center edition. I've got just got under 900 gigs of free space. I've got two network cards and I'm using an i7 processor. And there's also the uptime here as well. And I've also got Microsoft Defender antivirus installed as well. So that OS, when I installed it, didn't have a graphical user interface, right? It was all CLI driven. And you'll see that when we go for our virtual machine demo for onboarding it to Arc as well. And I just wanted to look at the left hand side here so if i go to settings again very similar to the azure portal right um we've got um azure file sync here as well if i was using azure files i've also skipped azure backup which i wanted to talk about so i can set up azure backup here if i wanted to as you can see here it's already connected to my Azure account. I've got the subscription ID that I wanted to use. I can create a new recovery services vault, the resource group, and the location. I can then also select um, backup items, right? So the system state or the volume drives like data or the operating system drive. I've even got like the, the schedule and retention policy for that as well. And I can also add a strong encryption passphrase here for added security. Um, we've got the Azure Hybrid Center as well. I'm just going to go through these options very briefly. So yeah, on-premises servers meets the cloud, right? So if you're familiar with Azure Stack, that works in a similar way as well, but it's more dedicated. But as it says here, right, it's once you've got Azure Arc enabled, so the Azure Arc agent's been deployed, right? 
onto your local server on premise, then you'll be able to discover and access these Azure services for your on-prem, uh, your on-prem pre presence. So Azure backup, Azure site recovery. So that's really handy if you've got virtual machines and you want to rep replicate them to Azure and do a DR scenario, or if you're looking at um, doing a migration of those virtual machines as well. Um, this is a great way of getting that set up. Um, Azure File Sync. So again, if you've been using Azure Files for a few years now, you will know that you create a basically a presentation server with a file share on it that gets replicated up to Azure Files, right? But the presentation server is on premise, or it could be in the cloud. Azure Update Manager as well. So, you know, taking all the pain away from managing and updating patching servers, right, in Azure, using Azure Update Manager. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's Windows or Linux. Now you can actually, you know, remove the requirements of using source or System Center to update your servers and just use the Azure Update Manager. And then there's also the, you know, integrating it with the Microsoft Defender for Cloud. So, um, you know, bringing the added value of the security platform there as well. So, you can even deploy Azure Kubernetes services on-prem using this as well. So, simplify um, deploying containerized applications right locally i haven't got some of this stuff set up but the you know there's some there's some familiar um some familiar stuff here so monitoring alerts with azure monitors in preview then we've got local management of certificates on the server 23 expired there i wonder what they are let's check that out it's the microsoft root and it was 2001 safe to say that one's probably not being used anymore right but it's good to get visibility of what's happening there then we've got event viewer now this is coming back to the local server so we've got windows logs application logs microsoft logs right we've got files and file sharing if i had this set up as a file server so here we can see like my you know some local drives that i've got then i've got the windows firewall that's on the server as well so I can modify, change the incoming and outgoing rules here. Then I can make modifications to the local users and groups. So trust the administrator account there. I can do packet monitoring, performance. I can fire up a PowerShell command uh, console right in the web browser, as you can see here, right? Very similar to the Azure portal using the console features, right? Can look at processes so see what's taking up the majority of my cpu I can look at the registry so i can make dangerous adjustments here if i wanted to uh, i wish that i had these tools when i was uh, a sysadmin back in the day and then roles and features so once i got my uh, local home lab server set up i was able to come in here and install Hyper-V role, so I could you know host virtual machines locally. So let's go and take a look at virtual machines. As you can see here, there's loads of different options as well, right? Let's just take a look at virtual machines. So I've got a couple of VMs there that have been deployed. I've got a Kubernetes lab that's running on Linux, which is turned off. I've got a domain controller that I'm building at the moment to demo, you know, synchronization to Microsoft Entra. So let's have a look at the Azure Arc. So it hasn't been up that long, so let's get this set up. What I want to do is grab the IP address from this so I can use remote desktop, so I can copy in the Azure Arc PowerShell scripts later on. So I'm just going to click connect. So this is going to connect for our very basic RDP session via the web browser, just to get us going. So control alt delete, control alt delete to unlock. As you can see here, it's asking me to set the password before signing in. This is how fresh it is. So. Just 
type password in. Changing the password, password's been changed successfully. As you can see here, it's purely CLI because we haven't got the desktop experience installed. There's no real requirement for a desktop GUI on a server, right? I mean, Linux servers have been doing this for decades. Um, I would say over the past nearly 10 years now, you've been able to do like a core edition of, of a Windows Server install, which has been great. So let's enable a couple of things. So what we've got here is remote desktop is disabled. So I'm just going to enable that. And I'm going to enable, I think it's remote ping. Where is that? Let's have a look at four again. So let's go to enable responses to ping. Awesome. So I want to get the IP address. So I could go to the command line, but I'm a bit lazy. So let's have a look at the network settings here. So the IP address for this is 192.168.1.147. So I'm just going to go over to my RDP. And I'm going to just make some changements here. So we can connect to the server. One four seven. So if this connects correctly, we should see me getting booted out on the main screen here. Click continue. And I've been booted out. So I'm logged in on the other screen. I'm just gonna bring that across. Got my RDP session here. As you can see here, I'm at the previous window that I was at before. That's a little bit small. Let me try and make that a bigger. So, what we want to do now is go to the Azure portal to grab a PowerShell script that's generated by the Azure portal, by the way, to onboard this as an Azure Arc server. So, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on Azure Arc. So when you come to Azure Arc, it's basically got its own platform. And in here we can see our site manager, our Azure Arc resources, so be virtual machines or Kubernetes clusters, or maybe we've got hosted environments with Azure Stack HCI or VMware vCenters, or even System Center Virtual Machine Manager, right? If you're still using that. And then if we've got integration, so you say we've got a host operating system, but we've got SQL Server installed as an application server on top, as a database server, then we can also query that as well. There's also looking at the Internet of Things there as well. And then there's some bits and pieces as well around app services. So let's go to virtual machines. As we can see here, we've got our Hyper-V host. So and what's in here. Um, we've got some basic metric data here. We've got the operating system type, the version. You know, basically it's an Intel NUC. We can see here that it's in it's hosted in the proud province of Alberta. And uh, it's in the Bow data center, which is obviously fictitious. It's in the basement of my my home. So in here we can look at you know updates. So again, I can select that, click save. So that will create an assessment and tell me if there's any updates running in the next couple of hours. Um, but yeah, let's let's go over and on, on board another server. So let's go back to Azure Arc. So I'm going to click Add and Create here at the top. I'm going to add a virtual machine or add a machine, should we say? Maybe it's a physical machine. You know, actually on, hosted on bare tin, right? So I've got add a single server. I can add multiple multiple servers for bulk bulk onboarding, I can do it via Windows Server with installer, or I can add a server from AWS, such as an EC2 instance, by creating an AWS connector. Or I can add servers using the update management tool as well, right? So let's click generate script on add single server here. Let me just make that a little bit bigger. That's looking a bit small for folks. That's a bit better. 
So I'm gonna click on generate script. So I'm gonna put this in my my subscription. I've got a resource group called Azure Hybrid Lab. The region's gonna be Canada Central. It's gonna be Windows. I'm not gonna have SQL on there because it's just a, a core server operating system. So I might use it as a file server, a file share. I'm gonna use public endpoints as a connectivity method. I mean, you can use proxy servers or you can use private endpoints if you've got a site-to-site -site VPN or an express, express route gateway circuit. So now we're gonna go and click on download and run script. And as we can see here, right, it's generated me a PowerShell script to run. So I didn't have to do anything. I just had to basically insert some variables to generate the script, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this script. I can download it if I wanna distribute it that way, but seeing this as a demo, I'm just gonna copy it. I'm then gonna bring up my um, remote desktop. Show Windows, I'm just gonna grab this. And I'm just gonna cancel this out. I'm gonna exit to the command line. Let me see. If I can make that a little bit bigger. I don't think there's an option, unfortunately. So I'm gonna paste this command in. It's just not gonna let me do. I'll try and grab it again. Minimize this. Bring up my RDP, let's make that bigger, paste that in, and the script's starting to run. So now it's basically pulling down the uh, Azure Connected Machine Agent. Um, it's running the install, the MSI package at the moment. It should ask me to authenticate with, it, with Azure at some point, right? So it'll ask me to do a device uh, device login code. So I'm just waiting for the code to populate in this terminal window here. Let's see if I can try and make that a bit bigger. Let me have a look, where is the text? Let's see if I can make that bigger. That's a little bit better, but it's not perfect. So, as we can see here that the script successfully deployed, it's asking me to sign in using a web browser. So it's asking me to do device uh, login and it's giving me a code here. So I'm just gonna grab this. I'm just gonna go over to my other screen to authenticate. gonna authenticate this. It says now that I've populated that correctly, it's signing in, it's creating a resource a resource in Azure, and there's a correlation ID, which you should be familiar with if you deploy resources in Azure as much as I do. The subscription that it gets deployed in, the resource group, and where to find the object. So now we can say, you know, we've been presented with this info here that, that says connected this machine to Azure. So let's go and check this out. So if I go back to Azure Arc, let's do a refresh, and we can see a new virtual machine that's been populated here. So if I click on this new object, we've onboarded our guest virtual machine on our home lab to our Azure portal. And that is what exactly how you would repeat that if that was a production machine, if that was a machine being hosted in VMware or Hyper-V and was a guest a uh, virtual machine on those platforms. So this will be um, obviously onboarding this virtual machine now, um, grabbing performance metrics logs, getting updates for it, etc. And let me just get that set up, right, for, for an update assessment. And yeah, and that's exactly, I can now manage my on-premise virtual machine via the Azure portal.
If you like this episode, or if you want me to dig in deeper to any of the sections that we've seen today, don't forget to like and subscribe, or leave me a comment in the comment section below, or you can reach out to me on social media through the normal channels. I just want to say thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye for now. Yeah.